Good afternoon, Grace Church small groups. It's good to be with you again, and I'm really excited about this week's lesson, so let's jump in. It is really uh, this uh, altar of incense is about prayer. I hope you gathered that from your reading. It's uh, all about prayer and interceding with the Lord. And uh, interceding is an interesting topic for us because do we really spend time interceding in our prayer time? Do we go to God passionately and on fire, as he describes in this chapter, on behalf of other people? Or do we just kind of go through our list and just mention names knowing God knows the situation? There seems to be something to this idea of passionate prayer. And I just, uh, I probably underlined half of this chapter as I was going through it, and, and I hope you did too. And I was especially fired up that he mentioned uh, Pentecost in there and the fire that descended on the church uh, at that time. And the takeaway from this chapter for me is God lights the fire, but we have to be prepared. What's our part in God lighting the fire? And I think as I've observed our progression through this book and as I look at our church and in these past uh, few weeks and, and really months now, that God is preparing us for this time. And I hope you guys in, in our small groups sense it because I'm going to call on y'all to, to help us get over the hump because I believe there's a revival starting and has already started here at Grace Church and I think if we want to see it fanned into flame, it will only happen through the prayers of the saints. And so let me ask you, are you interceding? Are you praying for revival? Is there a passion in your heart that wants to see something new and fresh happen, soul saved, people healed, lives transformed, people set free? Uh, is this the passion that's in your heart right now? And if it's not, ask God for it. I think that's a fire that he wants to light. But above all, the warning we take away from the book is it can't be fake. It really can't. It can't be manufactured by emotionalism and, and things that we do. We really have to. There's The only way to truly acquire it is to get on our knees, get on our face before God and say, God, would you light my fire? Lord, would you set me on fire, set me ablaze um, before people? And so this is a key week, and I, I think God's timing is perfect. It, I, I obviously uh, did not plan it this way, but Lent starts on Wednesday. Uh, that means three out of our four small groups will watch this video before Lent. Uh, Christina, your group is getting this the day after, which is fine. Uh, it's still not too late. But Lent is a season of us dedicating extra time because of fasting something in our lives so that we can approach God. And it's a time for us to lay aside distractions. It's a time for us to, to draw near and, and to spend more time interceding. And so I want you to take the lessons from this chapter in this book and say, how can I apply these during this season of Lent so that revival can happen? Now, we have a lot of people in our church. Just under half of our church is not in small groups, but just over half of our church is in small groups. And so what would happen if we, who are here, jumped in with both feet and began to intercede on behalf of our church and on behalf of lost people, on behalf of those who are bound up uh, in fear, uh, who are, are sick in their hearts and sick in their heads and sick in their bodies. Lord, uh, what if we prayed and committed and interceded for 40 days? What would God do? What kind of fire could God light? And I think we are on the perch <laughs> of doing something great. And I want to inspire you today to make some decisions about Lent, uh, about committing 40 days to uh, seeing what God can do, not just for you, but for those who are around you. That's what intercession really is. It's not just praying for me. It's praying for those who are around us. And I'm reminded of uh, his, his lesson on the, the greatest act of intercession uh, was Jesus on the cross. As he 
looked out with love and compassion at the people who had just nailed him there. And in that crowd, I was there. And in that crowd, so were you. And Jesus says, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Lord, teach us to intercede like that and revival will happen. And so, Lord, set us on fire. Let that be your prayer. Lord, set us on fire for you in this season and may you get the glory. So I have a few discussion questions for you here. I hope that uh, we will turn the corner from uh, talking about our giftedness and uh, the fruit of the Spirit because we understand what those are and now we're putting them uh, into practice and we're doing it by getting on our knees as worshipers and praying and calling out to God. So God bless you. Have a good discussion and I'll see you on Sunday.